man, I have waited too long to talk about this. I saw this movie like back in November at the AFI Film Festival, and I have been holding this in for so long. I have wanted to talk about the ending of this film and the implications of it and what it can mean for Shyamalan fans and the future of what he may do with his career. I have just been sitting here just like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk about this. So, spoiler review of Split. If you have not yet seen Split, I'm about to talk in full detail about this movie. I already have a spoiler-free review. That's going to be linked at the end of this video. So if you don't want to know certain details, now is your warning. You have been warned. Let me fix something in my background. So, this film takes place within the universe of Unbreakable. <sighs> I finally got to talk about that. As the film progressed, and as we learned more about his split personalities, and we got to see James McAvoy doing all these crazy things, the film, for me, kind of pushed the limits of believability when the doctor was like, you know, people who have these types of abilities can change their body chemistry with their thoughts. And I'm like, eh... All right, I mean, I'll go with it. I've seen stranger things in movies, but as soon as he shows up shirtless with his veins bulging out of his body, I was like, oh, is this the twist that he actually is like a beast or something? Like, I was like, oh, man. I really liked it up until then, and, and that's one of the things I want to reiterate. Is I didn't just love this movie because of the twist. The twist kind of filled in specific gaps of issues that I had, but I really enjoyed the movie. And then when the Beast stuff started happening, I was like... <sighs> if you remember back in my original review, I said that there is a moment of this film where I was like, I don't know if I'm on board with this. You just kind of have to ride it out and wait. And now that I know that essentially what this is, is an origin story for a supervillain... I love this movie. Unbreakable is one of my favorite movies of all time. I love the fact that it took a superhero story and told it in a more realistic, grounded way. Not just like Batman Begins or The Dark Knight, but in a very realistic way where you feel as if you're not even really watching a comic book movie, but you are. But it's more believable. Certain things make more sense. And that started in the year 2000 when the superhero comic book boom hadn't happened yet. So it's really cool to see Shyamalan finally revisit those roots. And according to him at the director's conversation at the end of the screening at AFI, he had actually written this character that is portrayed by James McAvoy back in 2000 or 99 whenever he started writing Unbreakable. This character was part of his original three movie arc of Unbreakable, at least that's what Shyamalan said at AFI Fest but he couldn't figure out how to include him in the original film. And now all these years later, we have an origin story for a supervillain in the Unbreakable universe. And uh, it just makes everything else in the film work. When you go back and watch it a second time, you see him doing all these things like crawling on the wall and crawling on the ceiling and taking you know shots to the body and bending those bars. It's like that's... His ability, he's extremely strong, he's got a crazy messed up mind, he's psychologically impaired, he's a great villain, and if they decide to do more in the Unbreakable universe, I am pumped to see what they can do, because as it pans across that bar, and when David Dunn, Bruce Willis, was revealed, I'm telling you, the audience went insane at AFI. I was sitting next to Mark Ellis, I grabbed him by the shoulders and said, holy shit, and shook him, and we just like looked at each other, and you know, it was amazing. <laughs> it was really awesome. So, uh, to be able to have a twist ending all these years later for Shyamalan's career that had that much of an impact on me and a lot of other people, that's impressive. But still, I must reiterate, I liked the movie already. I really appreciated all of the performances. I thought it was a very fun psychological thriller. I love the dance scene with James McAvoy just freaking out. That is such an incredible sequence. And again, according to Shyamalan at the AFI Fest premiere, he's actually acting out a story of someone dying and then coming back to life as a zombie through his dance. It's so unique. Uh, there's a lot of really cool Easter eggs in the movie. There's a shot of his computer screen and one of the emails or one of the contact names is Mr. Pritchard. If you're a fan of signs like I am, you may remember Lionel Pritchard and the Wolfington brothers. But one of my favorite things in this movie is the arc of Anya Taylor-Joy's character. Because in the beginning you feel like, why is she so at ease? Why does she know all of these things? Why is she telling the girl to wet her pants? Why does she know all these things perfectly and why does she feel so calm? As the movie progresses and you peel back the 
layers of her backstory, you realize that as a youth, she has dealt with considerable physical abuse, and possibly as she's even grown up into adulthood. Because at the end of the film, the cop is like, hey, your uncle's here to pick you up. And the look on her face is like, I don't even know what's happier, back with that guy or going to my uncle. But you kind of get the sense just through the lingering shot of her face that she's about to be like, you know what? Fuck that guy. I'm not going back there. Who knows? We'll see if that arc gets explored more. Even if it doesn't, I like the way it's left. I think it's really beautiful and haunting at the same time. But it also helps you understand why she was so rock solid throughout those scenarios because she's dealt with a lot of shit like that before. And that's really smart storytelling and really brave storytelling. In fact, everything about the storytelling in this movie is brave because Shyamalan is specifically trusting the audience to not get bored and to not ask too many questions and get angry and leave because the answers are coming. He's not just like, hey, here's the characters, this is what they are. As the film progresses, you learn about them and it's brilliant storytelling. See, I'm a big fan of musical scores and the Unbreakable Score by James Newton Howard is one of my favorites. So when James McAvoy was looking at his wounds in the mirror and it was like, da, 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 I was like, Are you fucking kidding me right now? No fucking way. And I just look, I, I actually, under my breath, I went, holy shit. And Mark Ellis was sitting next to me and he was like, what? And I was like, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Guys, what did you think of Split? Those are my spoiler thoughts on this movie. It's my favorite Shyamalan film since Signs. I think it's fantastic. I really can't wait to see if he does more with this world. I feel like one of the biggest reasons he hasn't announced a next project is because it's possible that it could be Unbreakable. So he probably doesn't want to like ruin that for people who don't know and haven't seen Split yet. I hope you guys do check this film out in theaters if you haven't already. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck -manized.